Hello, I'm Paul Dajczyk, founder of Elastic Steel, method of athletic conditioning. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the air ductors, what they do, adductor flexibility, letting go of the adductors, and the issues that they can cause in squatting movement and lunging movement, as well in the kicks. I was consulted by someone who had issues when they were doing the squats, they were doing the lunges, and they were doing the kicks. What all that has in common, I'm going to talk about squat and, and sideline kicks for a second. When you do the squat, especially low squat down here, what you have is you have the legs abducted, we have flexion here, and to a degree we have the internal rotation. So some of the air doctors that do that can have an issue. Of course we want to check if someone is favoring the external rotation. Now, to do that, we have to go through all the other muscles that do the external rotation. Tortorius, and in case that I'm talking about, it didn't present an issue. The six deep external rotators, checked, no problem. Hamstring, external hamstring doing the external rotation, no problem. Uh, Solus, iliacus, no problem. What's the air ductus? Now, one of the ways that can be checked for the air ductus is actually to do the squat, have the knees out here, okay? So this abduction here, flexion and internal rotation and check. The problem is sometimes when people go into the squat and there's an issue with the adductors, they compensate by flattening their back. Okay, notice somebody comes down this way, you're gonna get one result. Somebody comes down this way, flattens the back, you're gonna get another result. So what I like to do is do the baby pose and from here bring the knees out a little bit. Okay? If, see if there's any pain. Once the person is here, they should go into anterior pelvic tilt or lower doses. In other words, not to be like this, but to be like that and try to come down as low as possible. Now, for precaution measures, I will have the person actually go into one direction and into the other direction here. Okay, you can't be up, you have to be very, very low to get that flexion, and from here he would go in one direction, go in the other direction. Now the legs here once again, now adducted, you're flexed, okay, and because of this, you would also check the rotation, and then you will see if the adductors present a problem. Now in this specific case, the adductors were the problem. So this person had the Hampton flexibility system, which has a foam roller, has the balls, has a massage stick, and I said massage that area. What happens two weeks later, this person said it's not working. And I was very surprised, because I know that this works. Very often it can release from the first time, and you can go deep into the movement. So what this person was doing is rolling it this way for the adductors, rolling it this way for the adductors, okay? Using the balls at the same time. Now, when I ask him, did it get sore? Did you use moist heat? He said it did not get sore, which surprised me. So we went for something deeper, and something deeper is using the stick. Some people need a lot deeper massage than others. This might look a little bit weird, but it works very well, okay? So what you're gonna do is, if you don't know where your muscles are, you would just go by the tight spots. You would find those tight spots, okay? And here I have it on my air duct. And all I'm doing is putting my body weight into it. Okay, putting my body weight into it. And I'm gonna stay here, let it release a little bit, come off, give it a break for a few seconds, go back in, let it release a little bit. So one spot released, and then I might move a little bit down the leg, or I might move a little bit up the leg. I might move a little bit closer to the hamstring or a little bit to the front, and I would work those positions till I feel like everything released. Of course, once that happens, I would use moist heat and allow all that area to be worked on. Now, after a few times, when you will test yourself again, okay, you will see that once you're here, this area has released and you're actually able to come in more to the ground, bring your knees out more, and at the same time, rotate them more. Okay, now quick question, how does that apply to kicks? Very often it's related to sideline kick because when you saw that sideline kick, it is abducted and you need to rotate it in. If you have issues with the outward rotation, the muscles that actually pull it into outward rotation, your side kick 
is going to have an issue. You're going to compensate with your back, you're going to compensate all over the place. You might actually do the knife foot because when you, you don't do it flat, now the toes are up and you can't really bring it down. All of that will work on that outward rotation to lessen it and allow the hip to go into inward rotation. Now remember, so is one deflection. The soles is very often looked at as an issue for the outward rotation. Sometimes people look at the hamstring, sometimes people look at the deep six. Rarely people look into the sartorius, but the adductors can have a lot of issues. Not all adductors want the flexion, so the ones that don't will have you around your back and cause back issues when you go into those deep ranges. I'm Paul Dyshuk, thank you for watching.